Illinois native Josh Gilbert went from being an overweight kid to a workout fiend, setting high school records for weightlifting along the way. After attending chiropractic college, he and wife Gina moved to Salem, where they opened a practice in 1998. The Gilbert started hiking and biking, then began directing races in the area. Josh Gilbert then became a marathoner and ultra-marathon runner and has competed in countless mountain bike races. In 2007, Mountain Junkies LLC was created. Mountain Junkies stages a series of trail races throughout the year and provides timing services for other road races. The trail races of varying lengths, run by Josh and Gina Gilbert, have developed a loyal following and seem to grow in popularity every year. Josh Gilbert, welcome to the interview. You sent me your bio, and you in the bio it says that you were an overweight kid as uh, like a freshman in high school or something. Oh, I was overweight. I can't in, imagine that now. Yeah, up until junior high. And that's uh -huh. when I first started to learn that I could be responsible for my weight, and I, I got interested in working out in the gym, lifting weights, trying to get as strong as possible. Uh -huh. And you set some weightlifting records in school. Yeah, my first love was going to the gym, lifting weights. I was able to bench 350 at 16 years old. I was able to squat 550 pounds. So I can't uh, imagine that. You don't, yeah. you, don't, you, don't, you don't strike me as a weightlifter type. <laughs> yeah, things change. You know, I was interested in the gym until about 2001, and that's when all of our time got taken over with running and right. biking on the area trails around here. Right, and that's really when you went to chiropractic school, I think, of what in St. Louis, right? Yes. Uh, and then uh, you and Gina moved here, and... A couple years later, you were running races and then helping direct races. Um, what did you know when you got to Roanoke, the Roanoke Valley? Do you understand this big push now to you know market the area as an outdoor haven? Yeah, yeah. One of the first times I heard anything about the big, the grand scheme was in Rotary. We had somebody visit uh, and talk about the Greenway plan, and it was at that time they said, "Oh, we're going to have a Greenway that goes from Green Hill Park to Explore Park." But that was years before any Greenway construction got, got started. So. Yeah. It was far-fetched at that time, but now you start to see the pieces getting put together. Yeah, I think now with the, the Tinker, Brig, uh, Tinker Creek Bridge extension, you can actually go from one end of Fallon Park to Vic Thomas, and then it can open another little piece here. You'll actually be able to go about nine, ten miles in one direction. Yeah, it's very impressive. And any Saturday you go down there, you're going to see tons of people. Mm -hmm. And being able to see people being active, I think, encourages more activity. Yeah. You know, you... You got turned on to fitness as a kid. Does it bum you out sometimes when you see kids today, how many are overweight or obese or just, you know, seem like they're sedentary? Yeah, I mean, you, you hear the statistics on kids and obesity and where we're going to be in 2020, and it, it, it can be depressing. And then you see, well, when we time races or the races we put on, we see such a large contingent of kids that are 13 and under that are getting active, that are doing very well. Some of them beat me in the races, or a lot of them do. Exactly, yeah. and they're, you know, three foot tall. Right, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're running twice as far because their legs are half as long. Uh-huh. Um, and you've also, in addition to, of course, putting on these races, you, you yourself are a mountain biker and a, a long-distance runner. You've done some ultra-marathons. Yeah. Uh, talk I, about some of the distances and some of these races you get into. I, I have somewhere around 24 ultra marathons, which is anything above and beyond 26.2 miles. Okay. And my wife and I got into that early on because there was no other trail racing option. You either ran road races or you ran ultra marathons. And David Horton, who is in Lynchburg, he puts on a series of 50Ks, a 150 miler, and now there's a 100K. So I got started pretty much six months after I started running, I ran my first 50K. Yeah, uh, which is how many miles, 50K? That one's, it's 31 miles okay. by the book. Most of them run 32 to 34. It's, okay. it's loosely a uh, 50K. They call it 50K plus. So you've done a 100K race? I have. That's like how many miles? It's in, 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 that one ended up being 66. Okay. 6 miles. It's Hellgate 100K, so they play on the sixes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and talk about your evolution, Josh, to starting the, the Mountain Junkie series and the Arnut series where you're offering now a series of trail races, uh, which runs pretty much from the beginning of the year with the, uh, the frozen toe till the end of the year, different lanes. Talk about the evolution to that. Well, we wanted to set up, my wife and I, Gina, uh, we wanted to set up a trail series that really takes somebody from 5K, which is the entrance distance for any running 3 race. 3.1 miles, right? Yeah. And then take them to a 10K, the option of a 10-miler, 
and then half marathon, 25K, and fortunately last year we were able to put on a, the first marathon in our series, which... Conquer the Cove. Yeah, it's the anchor event, and that's coming up June 3rd. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to see people, you know, increase their distance, because just like me, I think most people will run a distance, they'll say, that wasn't too bad, let's see what I can do next, and then they gradually start adding on these distances to where they're running a marathon and even entertaining the 50K option. Right. And I remember when uh, reading an article with you in the Ronald Times before Conquer the Cove last year, and you were basically saying that if you can run the 25K at Conquer the Cove, which is the 15.6 miles or something, yeah. that you could run a road marathon. And that, in my case, it turned out to be true because I ran the Richmond Marathon at 354. So. I think most people's limitation is what's here. Uh -huh. Anybody can run these distances. I, I find that any race that I've ever been in, I can look around, I can see somebody older than me, I can see somebody that appears to be less fit that will finish before me. And because of that, I've never placed the limitation on I can't do something. It's just a matter of how comfortable am I going to be at the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of it really is mental because when you're running, you're like, why am I doing this? Why don't I just stop and walk? Or why don't I just right. stop at that coffee shop and have a latte or yeah. something? And so it really is a lot of internal motivation. What, what did running and, and being fit, what did it do for you mentally? Well, I feel like I'm a less frustrated person. I can go out on the trail and I can sort through what's in my mind. I can make sense of, you know, the challenges of life out there on the trail, plus being connected to nature. Um, being able to see new things, experience things that really a small percentage of people uh, get to enjoy. And, and it's that that kind of makes it special for me. I mean, I've always enjoyed things that, say, caving when we first got here. Mm -hmm. You know, you're seeing something that very few people have seen, and it, it gives you that sense of uh, doing something that's special. Mm -hmm. And talk about the, uh, in, inside the Mountain Junkies series of races is, is the R-Nuts. Yes. Uh, which you're wearing the R-Nuts right. shirt there. So and the, Talk about that. That's a series, and it's actually yeah. standings and points and the whole thing. Yeah, it, you know, play on words. You know, mountain junkies are nuts. How yeah. many times we've told people what we do, and they say, well, I mean, that's just crazy. Mm -hmm. So we've got the Roanoke non-ultra trail series. So, again, it builds up from that 5K to marathon. And um, we started that, I think, in 2008, and it's built up in races to now there's six of them and there's points assigned it's a best of four so if you have a bad race you can throw that thing out right and uh it it's another aspect of what we've wanted to do in creating a community people show up to the races they say hey where was mr smith last time we missed him uh, we really missed catching up with them so right. we've seen people become friends we've seen people get training partners and it, it's really been a fun mm -hmm. a fun thing for us yeah talk about carbon's cove uh Josh, I know that you spent time there, and I know that um, I know at least one person that works for Roanoke City that moved to Roanoke Valley in large part because yeah. of Carbons Cove. And talk about Carbons Cove, which seems to be a place that still a lot of people have not gone to either hike or bike or walk. That when we moved here, we parked along the road. It was loosely open to. To trail running and biking it was right. more equestrian and then now the trail system has really uh, become a, a mapped organized trail destination there's been a lot of work done on the trails too yeah i mean it's yeah. huge uh, they still quote it as the largest municipal park mm -hmm. in the u.s or second largest yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know where it ranks uh, at the moment uh -huh. uh, and <clears throat> they've got a huge trail plan so people are starting to use it more they're starting to understand where the trails are and what the big picture is which once they achieve what's on that trail plan it's it's going to be the place for people any right. body traveling to southwest virginia is going to come to and ultimately you'll be able to walk all the way from the Roanoke River Greenway, connect to the Tinker Creek Greenway, and make your way to Carbon's Cove if you want to. So you could, yes. do, you could really do a nutty, really long race. Well, huh? Yeah, once they get the gateway, you know, the access right. points to the cove, it's the, the options are endless. Yeah. yeah. And Josh, I know that um, uh, Mountain Junkies has helped maintain trails at Explorer Park after the park sort of shut down. You've yes. helped maintain some of the the running and, and biking trails. Uh, talk about that and, you know, what would you like to see maybe in the future at Explore Park? Could, would you like to see that become more of a, almost like a state park or something, or something that really is promoted as an outdoor venue? Well, they, I had helped direct the race that really was there to promote 
the park. And when they came to the conclusion that hey, it's not going to be open any longer, we're going to have to close the trails if somebody doesn't take over these uh, the responsibility. So Gene and I came on board and said, we'll be the program and uh, trail maintenance coordinator so that we can keep these trails open. We'll hold some events so that we have a major push for a reason to keep them open. And um, people still go out there. They're still learning that the trails are open because we went through a, a period of time where nobody knew. They thought the park was closed. Right, exactly. Oh, the, you can go to use the trails. Uh, we didn't know where to go, what to do. So now, because uh, the March event brought in 400 people, we're getting more exposure that the trails are open and people see the possibility of what that park can be. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I hate to see it not used, but without an influx of of cash. Right. I don't know what's going to be available out there. But there's been a lot of options in the quote unquote plan B for what the park can be and right. hopefully some of those will come to fruition. You and your wife Gina run a chiropractic business four days a week. Yeah. You're timing races on the weekend, you're running your own series. Is is the race aspect of your life is it more a labor of love than anything else at this point? We enjoy being fit. I personally like to be a person that doesn't have contradictions. So I'm going to walk the walk and walk the talk. So I want to be an example for the people of the community of what I do living an active, healthy lifestyle. The races, the timing, being around people that are trying to be fit or that are fit that want to be better. Those are the kind of uh, places we want to spend our time and effort in making uh, a bigger part of the community and what it can be. All right, Josh Gilbert from Mountain Junkies. We're going to have to leave it there. <laughs> sure. Thanks for joining Great. us today. Thank you. This is The Interview. I'm Gene Morano. We'll be right back.